Hello and welcome to the very first episode of The Bard Odyssey. I'm so yeah. pumped. We finally have this thing together. So real quick, I'm just going to introduce everybody around the table. I got Luke Palisard over here, Tony Klazinski, who you guys know from D&D, Sam is back, and Luke's brother Jake. They're all here, and we are ready to play the first episode. So I'm going to start off with you, Tony and Sam. As you recall, Cademan and Elore, you guys had gone into the mountains, leaving Kadimki Kala, <laughs> you and your group. Yes. You traveled um, through most of the day into the borderlands, kind of the wilds between two kingdoms, and you made camp, and everybody started taking watches. And Sam, during your watch, in the middle of the night, you hear Olin wake up with a scream. So you run in to check and find out. And you see Olin's like sweating as if he'd just woken up and had a bad nightmare. And he, he wakes everybody else up and he, he says, he explains to you guys that he had another vision, another visit from his patron. And his patron told him that you must split up because the blonde elf is working against you. So by his accounting, he figures that they might be on to the second crystal, but it's important that you guys find the elemental orb of air, which he tells you is called the breath of them. And them is the goddess of wind. So this is the crystal that they know the least about. They know that it's somewhere on the continent, but they don't know where. So Olin is going to go off in one direction. Mantra, who has the artifact, is going to go off in another direction. Olin has the black orb of the void. But you guys have to go off and find the breath of them. So at morning, you guys break and part ways. Um, Olin tells you that he has a way for you guys to contact him. And he hands you this crystal skull. Uh, sorry, silver skull. Oh, it's like a little silver. I was going to say, we might yeah. have a copyright issue there, yeah. Bill. No, it's a little <laughs> silver. It's like a little silver skull. And he hands it to you. And he tells you that when oh, you find the hands. breath of them, hold it and concentrate on Olin. And it will, send, it will send him a magical sending. And tell him where you're at so that he can find you. Okay? And he tells you, remember, trust no one, only the people that you trust the most, and find the breath of them. And then you guys all part ways. So you begin traveling, and you go kind of northwest. Um, and Tony, in Cademan's younger, younger days, when he was a traveling musician, before he settled down with his family, who were tragically wiped out. But we don't know how yet. That'll be revealed later. That's true. <laughs> In a flashback. In a flashback. Um, but you, you in your younger that. days, you used to tour with different musicians and you would play in different towns. And as you and Elore are traveling northwest into the borderlands, you remember a small town not too far into the great kingdom of Malakun, where there were a pair of human brothers who were excellent musicians that you used to be able to jam with. And you think that if anyone would join you in an adventuring company, it would be them. So you guys travel, and for the rest of the day, you're on the road, traveling through these rocky, craggy, mountainous areas until you come down into the foothills and then kind of towards the plains. And after hours more, you see on the horizon um, smoke rising from a few buildings and a small town up ahead. And I'm still riding Hank. Correct. You're still riding your pig, hand, but he's sure. very tired from the road. I know he so is. So you guys get into the town. And massage him later. Yeah, and just, I mean, just as you're getting into the town, Hank is like literally just wiped out. And you remember that there was like one big inn that used to host like traveling troops of musicians and stuff. So as you guys are kind of walking up, you see that inn, and it's, it's very close by. And Sam, you, you notice that you don't see any people like you in this town. And even though it's evening, like, and shops are closing, there's a lot of people around on the streets and stuff. And, like, everybody's staring at both of you as you were walking by. They're like, it's like they've never seen a Tabahi. And they're, you notice they're also looking at you and you're walking with Hank and they're kind of, like, looking down at you, like, curiously, maybe suspiciously. But... No one says anything, but you just kind of notice. They're like glancing at you and they're a little bit suspicious. But you walk in and just down the block, you see this big two-story wooden inn 
and the second story's got supports and it's kind of bumped out and you see lights flickering from the inside and you see people on the front porch with ale, mugs of ales, and there's chattering. And just inside, you start to hear music. As you guys approach, you walk into this inn and you open the double doors and you hear music playing. And you notice that like there's the whole place is full of people. And there's a like there's serving people running drinks back and forth. And there's, you know, there's lots of like travelers. It looks like people like you have been on the road. But the majority of the people in this inn are either elves, humans, or halflings. So when you guys walk in, you see these two human brothers playing music up on a little stage. And you notice that you are the only people that look like you. And everybody kind of like looks over to the door. And the music keeps going, but like you notice you are clearly in an area where your races are not commonly seen. All right, this is everybody like kind of stops and I'm looks be like up a at you. Princess wave and be like, "What's up?" Okay, <laughs> she's gonna do princess wave. I want to do like a triple double decker, like backflip, somersault, right down to the stage, and I go acrobatics. Yes. Should I roll? Mm-hmm. Should I roll for that? Okay. I have plus four. I feel pretty good. God damn it. <laughs> so here's what happens. You're like, yeah. And you go to do the triple flip, and you you roll, and you get the first roll, and then you flip over and you fall, and you slam right down in front of the stage, and the brothers see you and they stop. You guys are on the stage, and you look, and you see someone who you haven't seen in 15 years, and it's Cademan, the forest gnome. It's Cademan, the forest gnome. Yeah. <laughs> Power bards! No you, way! <laughs> you notice that his, his mustache has gotten longer, and it's waxed to the tips, and it kind of points up. And even though he's a little, like, he's got, like, dust and dirt from the road and mud on his boots. You can tell uh, that I'm doing very well for myself. You can tell that he's, he's doing, like, his clothing <laughs> looks like it's newer and richer than yeah. it was back in the day. So nice that. thrasher shirt. Is man. he still Thanks. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's, he's pulling himself up, and he, like, looks up, and you see the brothers, and they see you. You also notice a striking female figure that walked in with Cademan. What's up? And she is of a race that you've only heard of. You've heard of this race before, the cat people. But you've never seen one before. And she is literally a cat woman. It's like a tiger with a woman's body. So who's this cat? (laughs) Uh, This cat is Lore, Randy brother. Oh, I think. Ramon. Lore, pleased to meet you. Nice. So Don't greetings. Tread, tread lightly, though, gentlemen, because she is taken by His Highness of <laughs> oh, Shukrira La, or the name that suddenly escapes my broken brain. Don't remind me. You look wearily off into the sunset, but we continue on with the conversation. One of the drunks <laughs> is like, play music, play more music. So you, you guys start playing, and Cademan joins you in a little jam. <laughs> if I just, like, rap. Just like 80s, like just like vanilla ice. So here's what you're gonna do. You join them in a in, in a little music, roll a performance check. Nat 20 plus eight performance. Somehow, even though you aren't a hundred percent familiar with the tune, you just start striking like a nice little rhythm on your guitar. And that is a good enough roll for everybody. And all of a sudden, everybody in the bar is like, yes, yeah. And a few rounds of ale get brought up to you guys and sat there. And even somebody brought like four ales. So you're just like sitting off on the side of the stage, like dancing a little bit. And um, you guys continue playing the music and the whole crowd seems to be into it. Some people start throwing coppers up there for tip money. And after a little while, guys kind of finish up your jam and you let everybody in the know in know that you're going to take a little break and uh there's a table off to the side of the stage and you guys kind of descend and you sit down around your table with your instruments close by and a serving girl comes up comes up and she's like can i bring you uh, any food brothers yes i'm yes. quite parched yes <laughs> food and ale right away yes she comes back she comes back with, you know, more ale, and she comes back with, like, a plate of, like, meat and some vegetables. And Cheeses? 
some cheeses and a half loaf of bread. How many cheeses? <clears throat> two. Two. And you notice, by the way, that she only brought two plates. She sets them down in front of the brothers and the platter of food in front of the brothers, and then she like looks at you and kind of like looks at you, and then she walks away quickly. Didn't miss the racism, man. Did not miss the racism. <laughs> no, sir. So, it's been 15 years since you've seen Cademan. Uh-huh. Ramon, you're looking fat. <laughs> Thanks, Cademan. You <laughs> notice, actually, if anything, Ramon might be more swole than he was before. His muscles are oh, definitely... Oh, is he jacked? Ramon's he's in Ramon's in whoa. Jacked, yeah, we've yeah, been <laughs> skipping any <laughs> meals, <laughs> have you, Ramon? <laughs> Ramon is jacked. Ramon spent some time in the penitentiary, and he... <laughs> he did he, he beefed up. up, yeah. Maybe. So, uh, what's new? Guys? Just <laughs> eating food? Yeah. This pub? Playing gigs, man? Cool. You know what it is? Living the dream, man. I remember my younger days. Weren't they crazy? Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, crazy they were, weren't they? You remember that one person doing that one thing? Good oh. God. I can't scrape that from my mouth. <laughs> It's like, how did he get that many marbles in his mouth? Oh, God. (laughs) So listen, gentlemen. Unfortunately, I didn't stumble over here by chance. Mm. By serendipity, no, sir. I came here with a mission. A mission from God. We came here. We came here with a mission from (laughs) God. We got to get the band back together. Oh, jeez. Well, we're free. Uh-huh. We're down. You're free. Yeah, we're with it. I don't see why. You don't have to check docket. like your day planner or anything. You guys are just all up here, man. All up Only there. gig we got booked is next week. Then we're toast. Cool. Mm-hmm. Well, we'll have to miss that as well because it is an <gasps> urgent mission. However, That's... as you could tell by my nice clothes and waxy mustache, I'm doing quite well for myself, and I can <laughs> promise you, gentlemen. How much money do I have left? Wait, hold on. Give me. How much money do you have left, Sam? I feel like we have we have to have a lot. lot. But what specific amount do we have? I have a hundred gold piece or I have 124 gold pieces, eleven platinum pieces, and two gems. Yep, that'll do it. Okay, I have twelve gold pieces. (laughs) (laughs) Pretty much because you can go spend money on on dumb shit. (laughs) Yeah, I did. Just yeah, it's all on the it's all on the wax. But, gentlemen, I can promise you a gold piece each if you miss your gig, which I'll Bill can explain. That's, yeah, that that's, yeah, that's, that's more money, money than you'd make in, like, two months. What? Man, gigging's not doing it these days. Adventuring Questing. is, is the, the where the money's at. <laughs> there you go. Just like drug Anyways, what does this quest entail? We must find a smoky black sphere. No. 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 <laughs> nope. Wait, what was no, it? Not. It was no. It's the, the smoky wig. White sphere. Smoky white. Uh-huh. We must find the smoky white sphere, called Fen. The breath, the breath of Fen. The breath. What happened to your note taking <laughs> skills? <laughs> okay. Two Bill. months into college, and already you just stopped taking notes, Tony. It's, it's the you math, were the Bill. king of note taking. I know. We'll get it back, Bill. Once once I have to start putting my conspiracy job, theories Samantha. together, <laughs> I will start doing it. All right, fine. Get, I don't the even breath have breath of Fen. Oh, that's what the pencils are for. So, yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. So, we are off to find it. Because if we fail, gentlemen, the universe is at stake. Uh, you feel like maybe Kaneman isn't entirely being 100% true? What? But make an insight roll, Jake. Oh, insight roll <laughs> So is insight is based on your powerful wisdom. Telling the truth, bro? Okay, that is more, so you got an 18. So you feel like he's telling the truth, but maybe he's not telling all of the truth. Oh, so what are you leaving out? What's the catch? The catch is that it's very dangerous. Oh. The journey will be treacherous. The night's weary. However, if we are going to obtain this breath of them and save the universe, then we must go, and we must make haste, and also find a library, preferably with cute librarians, as that is something that I've come <laughs> to dabble with recently in my past. Now, you guys would both know this without even making a roll. You're about 50 miles away from the capital city of the entire kingdom. Okay. And it's, it has the biggest libraries and temple collections 
in like the entire continent. It's okay. the oldest kingdom and it's got the biggest libraries. It's yeah. it's basically got like the Library of Congress and Smithsonian. So you you know that the capital's not far away. So the local library is a solid option. It's um, not local, it's like fifty miles away. I mean, it's it's the biggest it would have the biggest collection of knowledge anywhere in this kingdom. Is that where we're headed? I think so. You also know that it's ruled by noble high elves who would very much disdain a forest gnome and a cat lady. Oh, that's we not need good. disguises. We're I need stilts. You gotta need to get rid of that mustache. Fortunately, both of you have disguise kits. Actually, oh. you have a disguise kit. Proficiency too, don't you? No. I'm. Oh, I'm ripped. I thought you did. No. Okay, that's bummer. No, that's a mantra. But you guys both have proficiency in disguise kits. We got disguises. We do. <laughs> oh, Yay! sweet! Just like the old days. And you can also make disguises. Oh, nice. It takes a little time, and you got to buy a couple supplies. But you could actually like your proficiency in disguise kit gives you the ability to work with like. Clothing, wigs, like putty, prosthetics, you know, ah. that kind of stuff. Oh my god, am I gonna look human? Yeah, so we're so gonna we have to make, make a disguise disguises? for this cat. You might have How to be disguise shaved. a cat. I think you'd start by shaving the cat. I don't. She would kill you. <laughs> I know she would. That's a risk we have to take. It's urgent. Speaking of danger, are you, Cademan? You are now realizing that while <coughs> it would be a great thing to have the brothers join you. There's one thing that you in your group now are a little bit short on. Having, having split up from your comrades, Mantra and Elixia, who were both skilled healers, you are now the only person with any healing magical abilities. And it Ooh. sure would be good if you guys had some kind of a cleric in your group. Y'all know a cleric by chance? Oh, I know a great cleric. She was Molly Cruz cleric back in the day. <laughs> wow. So she must be working some powerful magic. Oh yeah, her name's Maxine. You ever heard of her? Maxine? Hey, that wasn't the Maxine from the road that I used to go out with by any chance, was it? Maxine the Dream? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was her. Oh well, we wrote a little ditty about her. Got a little tune. You did? We do. And suddenly the brothers step back up on stage People kind of put their drinks down and they look up and murmur together. Murmur, 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 murmur. All right, break's over. We're back at it. One, two. I've been holding out for so long, reaching out for someone that's too far gone.
crowd goes crazy. <sighs> Actually, before they go Oh, crazy. that Maxine. <laughs> Roll with advantage, Luke. So advantage means you get to pick the higher of the two. So it's 17. 17. Plus seven. Seven is 25. You guys kill it. People lose their minds. You were once again showered, this time not with copper, but with silver. Ow, ow. Getting that money. You each get 27 silver pieces. Nice. So, which more than covers your bar bill that you've been acquiring for the last, I don't know, long time. I gotta pay off the tab. Where's where's, where's this go? Um, This one right there. Put it. Where? Which second one? Second one. Silver pieces. 27. Right on. So. 27. Oh, 27. You guys continue to play a little bit more. Um, and then kind of the, the inn starts to wrap things up. The innkeeper squares up with you guys. Um, you each get another gold piece, which goes here. One gold. And you're feeling pretty good. Nice. Now. You do have a room already, and it's paid for, so um, you know that they could bunk up there if they wanted to. That we have a room. Oh, I'd love to stay in the room. Let's bring that out. sounds Absolutely. like fun. Tony, let's bring out your pipe and just. Yeah, man, I got a I got a pipe with some uh, some uh, gnome grass, and uh, <laughs> I don't know if you guys remember from the olden days. If you oh. guys still hang around with some gnome grass. Some gnome yeah, grass, yeah. Dude, absolutely. I only do elf grass these days. Oh, no, you I gotta come back clean. to the old <laughs> fashioned. Clean. Now, fortunately, you're up in the room because you guys know that the um, gnome grass from the eastern side of Cobble Kailish is actually considered a contraband in oh, um, no. the kingdom of Malakum. So, you guys actually you go up into the room. You kind of settle in. You guys are shut just the blinds. Out chilling. You shut the wooden <laughs> shutters and basically just hotbox the room. Um, but then, as you're talking, um, so it occurs to you that the last time that you saw Maxine, she was actually headed to this temple in the capital of um, Malakun. So it's nice. it's not cool. probably more than it's it's more than one day of travel. Okay. If you guys get horses, you can make it most of the way in one day. Okay. Do we get horses or Shoelace Express? Do we know where, where to get horses? So you know that there is a stable in town, and there are a couple farmers who raise horses and sell them. Um, you guys don't have enough money to buy horses, but they do. Oh, we got you guys the room. <laughs> yeah, no worries. We'll get you on the horses. <laughs> nice. Um, and Tony, you would need to get some kind of cart for your whole horse to pull because there's Hank, no way yeah, Hank Hank's can make it jump 50 on miles. Then. No, it's okay. In fact, Hank has lost quite a bit of weight. You guys know Hank as, uh, actually, no, they wouldn't know Hank. They don't. I found you, Hank. Did, you did see that he is a pig. Mm-hmm. Oh. Yes. A big, he's got this big pig that he rides on. <laughs> yes. When I settled down with my family, me and my wife were like, it's time to get a pig. All right, we had been... Logically. Yes, yeah. obviously in the gnome community, um, you know, pigs are very important to our people. Um, not as a source of food, like many other places, but as a source of happiness, companionship, mm. and love. Right. And now I have a pig. As you do. Yeah, I rescued him from a tree. <laughs> wow. He had, Wiggled Probably his way up there, up there. yeah. I had to climb the tree. He was a little baby pig, carrying him down. Now he's my big pig. <laughs> That's heartwarming. Thank you. It is very heartwarming. So after kind of chilling and talking for a while, you guys retire for the evening, go to sleep, get some good rest. In the morning you wake up, you could smell breakfast being served downstairs. Mm. Smells like some good fresh bread that maybe has been baked, some, some kind of vegetables. You also smell something else. It's kind of a, almost like bacon. Oh. Immediately I run downstairs with like my dagger, my knee dart, and I'm just like, all right, who's trying to get darted in the face? And I immediately start looking You see that there are just slabs of bacon. I start crying. There are like (laughs) tears running down my face. And I I, I run over to the chef like, where did you get these? I've like jumped up. He goes like, he doesn't expect it. He's like, I I bought a pig from, from a farmer. Three days ago. Three days? Yes. You're sure? 
Was the pig's name Hank? Tell me. I don't know. It was a pig. You disgust me. And I slap him. I slap him right across the oh. face. We're trying to get some food. <laughs> he doesn't, slap he doesn't do anything. He's, he's just like, he's like shocked. Maybe too <laughs> shocked by being assaulted by a forest gnome. So I go, look at this wax. <laughs> you know how expensive this wax is? I can buy and sell you, sir. He, he's, roll intimidation. <laughs> I hope you fail. He'll cut you with a butcher knife. <laughs> now I'm nervous, Bill. Fail, fail. God damn it! <laughs> oh, wait, wait, what's my like, intimidation? He takes Plus a, four, I have six. He takes a rolling pin and hits you with it. <laughs> oh, he missed, oh. he didn't roll the one. All right, he I takes wanna... the rolling pin and it slips out of his hand and it goes flying across the kitchen. Okay. And um, makes a loud noise. Okay, I want to, um, blow gun, that's the net, right? Yeah, you didn't. You Dude. ran out with a knee dart. You're like in your <laughs> underwear. You don't have all your stuff with you. Okay. Do not um, fight. The can I wedge chef. him? I want to try to give him like a very okay. Fine. Wedge That's him. a grapple roll. <laughs> Thirteen plus what? Plus your strength. Plus my strength. Very small. Which is zero. Yeah, you still win. Much, yeah. You you grapple his underwear or his his waistband and you pull up and he's like. You like that, nerd? You like it? That's why I keep whispering in his ear. He, he, tr he tries to, like, punch you, but you're too little, and he, his fist flies past you. Around this time, the innkeeper comes into the kitchen and is like, What is this mayhem? What's going on here? I demand it. What? Stop at once. He tried to pick me up and take me in the back room and show me his pee-pee, sir. Roll deception. <laughs> that is a big, fat lie. Oh, this guy's getting fired today, baby. God damn it! Wait, wait, my wait. Can I use uh, persuasion? No. What? Because it's not true. <laughs> no, no, persuasion no, no. is persuasion. when you're trying to persuade someone. <laughs> All right, someone. let me see what deception That's is. Deception. Plus six. Plus six. Okay, like thirteen. He um, he buys it, and he's like, oh, Maynard, what did I tell you about staying away from people? He's like, Sir, just just go wait out there. I'll bring your breakfast personally. I'll I'll handle it. He's like, Damn it, Maynard! And then you hear him like yelling at the cook. So you go back out to the to your room and I assume get dressed, or do you check on Hank? No, no, I stay in my underwear you, and stare at the. Do you cook. go to the stable to see if your pig is there? I do. I run very quickly to make sure Hank's there, but you, I don't want to. Act you like open up the stall and Hank is there, and he sees you and he wakes up and he snorts in happiness and does, he does his thing where he circles around three times. <laughs> yeah, he does that. I take, you feel like he needs... I take out my little pig oil. I put some pig oil on him. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> meanwhile, okay, still still me and Hank are very close. You, meanwhile, you all of you normal that. people have gotten dressed, I assume, and gone down yeah. for breakfast. Yeah, I'm so still guys not We're just like eating at the table. You grab a table, yeah. You you know they start bringing you food and stuff. You come back in, still bo in boxes. Yeah, yeah, you're still in your boxes. Do you want to sit down and eat any food? Yeah, they have some like fresh fruit and bread. Some yeah, cheese. that's what I eat. What kind of cheese? It's um goat cheese. Goat cheese. It's actually very. Pungent, flavorful cheese. Ooh, that's wonderful. Yeah. I'll have some of that with the fruit. Toasted bread that just came out oh, of the oven. I will Ooh, have some butter. Yeah. Great, I have that. So, you guys have a nice breakfast. It's very quiet in the end. Just a few other people waking up in the morning. And, uh, and then you kind of finish up, go up to the room, get all your stuff. And you guys know that down the street is that stables where they, they have horses for sale. So, you guys started walking down go through the town, and again, there aren't that many people out this early in the morning, but there are some like shopkeepers setting up their little stalls and stuff, and you notice that everybody that you pass by like looks at them like kind of a mixture between just disgust or con confusion. Disgust? Yeah, Excuse like kind of like, me. like mm, just a little bit of, you just, you sense a little bit of racism. You still need their disguises. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we can get on the road and do that, so we're not doing yeah, it in so. town. Get so, you get to the stables? Yes. All right. How much How much are four horses, I say to the man, and a pig-sized chariot? Mm. <laughs> uh, well, we could do that. Um, I could put uh, this sled here together for the pig. How nice is the sled, sir? Uh, Does it only move in snow? Uh, no, sir. It can carry up to 300 pounds. That's wonderful. 
Um, and uh, in fact, I could, well, it's uh, that would be the cheaper option. If you wanted a full chariot, that by itself would be 250 gold. Gold? Correct. How much are the four horses? Well, uh, I could do the horses for 75 a pop. Uh, 75 gold? Yes, sir. Well, well five platinum pieces got us. Um, a pony? Maybe for him? That's it. Five okay. platinum. Let Would me you reiterate modify? my pricing. 75 gold for a regular sized horse times one, two, three, four is 300 plus a sled would make it 320 out the store. Or, if I may, you buy two horses and a carriage. Okay. Would That'd you be mind 250. If, would you mind if we discuss as a group really quick before oh, we get the final option? I call them all over. All right, listen, guys. I don't know who this man is, but I can tell you if we murdered him, no one would notice. Okay? <laughs> we do it real quick. We jump on horseback and we get out of here. Um, I say we take four horses and a nice chair. Make a intelligence check. You just roll. Yep, over. each one of you. Same time. Right. Yep, go ahead. Well, not very. Jake, it sounds like his plan is fantastic. Sick um, idea, dude. <laughs> however, Let's Luke, you him. feel like that would certainly not be a smart move, and the yeah. constables would arrest all of you and hang you. I'm having my doubts. <laughs> Yeah, me too. Okay, let me try to use persuasion to knock this price down. I have to say, <laughs> okay. so I want to walk over to him. Mm -hmm. Can I, should I roll before I persuade? No, tell me what you're going to say. Be like, hmm. sir. Tell him his horses look damaged. Having, yeah. having, having these horses here is hurting your business. Think about it. you got to wake up every day. you got to clean them. you got to you know, wash them. Oh, I want to sell them. I'm very motivated seller. Oh, are you? But let me just explain to you. Each horse, 75 for four horses. Oh, That's going to run you up to 300. Yeah. And a sled yeah. would be 320. Yeah. Now, let me give you another option. You buy two horses to pull the carriage. You Look could be the driver eyes. of the carriage, and your pig can go on the sled in the, in the back of the carriage where the baggage would go, and them three can ride in the carriage, and there you go. Cheaper, 250. It's a bargain. Do you know who I am? I do not, sir. There are stories of me, great stories. I'm not quite a god, but not quite a man. I, 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 frankly, I have I, magical uh, abilities. I've never met one of your Beyond your, your belief. Sir. Wait, hold on. I want to pull out. Can I seduce him? <laughs> How do you seduce him? That is same the same way I did that for the kindness. Okay. Yeah, let's see what Tony does here. I wanted to play my magical mandolin. Oh. Oh. Yes. You're going to invoke that level of power. Oh, yes. snap. Okay. I don't know. I'm just playing shit. Cool shit. Uh -huh. you know. Whatever. You right? play a, a sequence Serenatus, of chords. Serenatus. Come on. I don't know. Fuck yeah. I just look him down the eye and I'm just like... And what do you say to him? What's the, what's the demand? What are you asking him for? I want four horses for free. <laughs> you little nerd. I'm just so going wise, <laughs> so oh, powerful. Oh, <laughs> you are a gentle soul, I can see it through your eyes. Let me take these burdens from you. We go to do great things, to save the universe. You don't want these horses. I want these horses. Look oh, how well see, my pig looks. He starts to be falling under your spell, but he's like, but my family will be ruined if I don't get any gold for the horses. No, you and your family shall live in happiness in the woods, like me and my family did. Money destroys everything. If anything, I'm helping you by not giving you any money. <laughs> All right, first you're gonna make, first you're gonna make the performance check. Okay. If that succeeds, then the magic kicks in. Seventeen Ooh, plus eight, twenty-five. All right, now. Now you make the persuasion check with advantage. With, with advantage. Eight, oh, with advantage. Or. <laughs> Wait, eight, eight plus um, eight. eight, so 16. Persuasion. Okay, you feel like he's partially convinced, but he's like, the best I can do is give you the four horses. Or I'll give you two of the horses in the carriage for 100 gold. 
Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe me and How many platinum do you have? I have 11. That's enough. 10 platinum is 100 gold. Okay, well, that's all our platinum, man. Got no more platinum. Or you could try your seduction plan. Yeah, we'll do that. You know okay. what? Might as well give it away. Is well. he still woozy, though? Can He's she still a little advantage? woozy. So you walk, you saunter up. Isn't he cat racist? Maybe. We'll see. <laughs> but maybe he needs something exotic. Nobody's racist against something you don't try. <laughs> Good point. All right, redacted. <laughs> All right. Okay, so you saunter up. Redacted. Like a cat. <laughs> I just meow. And then like what? Cat walk up yes, to him. Yeah. And then he's his gaze is. He comes over. He looks at you. Like with, I do the same thing that I did with the highness, where I just like. You you kind of magically float over to him. All right, make your um, persuasion roll. Shit. <laughs> Ten. He's like, you are beautiful for a beast. <laughs> I mean, I'll uh, take it. And, and then he seems to like look back at you and he's like, I, I, I can't. My family will be ruined. I must, the lowest I could possibly go to help you would be 100 gold. All right, I want to try to seduce him. <laughs> You can. I've had, you guys think it's silly, but we've had so much luck with these seduction rolls, you have no idea. Karen from the library. Karen from the <laughs> library, it's true. The highness. The highness. The highness, yeah. God oh. damn it. Wait, hold on. Eight plus. Persuasion. Eight, so it's like 16. He's like, I, I'm afraid you're just going to have to leave my business down. God before damn I, it. Before I call the concert. All right, just give right. him platinum. God. Here's. Ten platinum pieces. We'll he take counts that. it all. He looks at it and he's like, "Why? Yes, thank you." I yeah, will, give us the horses, you little dweeb. Come on. I will prepare your carriage, and the horses. Okay, right. So he he gets the horses all bridled up okay. and all that stuff, and he pulls out the carriage, which is it's obviously used, but it's in good condition. You guys um, can actually. Three of you plus the pig can ride in the carriage, and then someone has to drive. So then we'll do I'll my do disguise first. You drive first. Yeah. And then okay. we'll switch. Yeah. All right. So you're up front, and you're, you're, and you know, the horses start taking off, and the carriage starts rolling. You guys are in the carriage, and you go through your bags and your backpacks, and you start pulling out all your like disguise things, and you're trying to figure out like how you're going to disguise her. And it occurs to you that there's really no way to hide her cat features, but then you come up with this genius plan. And you're like, what if we make her like a noble woman, like dressed in silky veils Ooh. and and like a like a, a headdress and stuff. Louis so you start Gigi going through your your fabrics <laughs> yeah. and you're like measuring her and you're working on that. So as you're riding for the the whole first day, you guys are like kind of just working on the costume. So here's what I'm gonna say: each one of you is gonna make a roll. All right. You would use wisdom, and you would also use wisdom. Okay, so the first part of the costume is finished, and it's, I would say, average. And then the next day, you'll make the final roll to finish it. Now, at a certain point halfway through, you switch, mm -hmm. and you take over driving, mm -hmm. and you go into the carriage, and they start working on your costume. I just, why? Can I pitch the idea that they just put me in like a backpack or something? You could. I'd Small like to enough? just be in the back. Oh, I'm tiny. I'm a tiny, tiny man. I'm like this big. A duffel bag would be a better fit. But you could probably get, you guys figure you could get a bag or like a chest. Just put them in one of your carry. guitar cases. There you go. Yeah. yeah. That yeah. would kind of work. You'd <laughs> yeah. have to be like not carrying your own stuff. Like your stuff would have to be carried by them. Yeah. But right. you could fit into a heart. And case. I could just be doing the little point and whisper thing yeah. from the guitar case. You that could. Yeah, and plan. we'll talk to you. Okay, while I'm driving, I want to roll insight, though. Okay. See if I see anything or anything. Perception, go. All right. Ten. Okay. You guys get, you make pretty good time. You, you get halfway there, and evening starts to fall. And because you're not super familiar with the area, you figure it's probably a good idea to, like, pull a wagon off and find a little place to hide out and set up a camp. So you do, you could sleep in your bedrolls like around a fire and, and straight up camp, which you guys are used to doing. Um, 
or you could sleep in the carriage or some combination thereof. Um, I would like to use, in this time of rest, I would like to use my alchemy kit to turn my uh, short sword into gold. So I can that is it. not something you could do in the back of a carriage. I thought we were like outside now. We're like Even camping. outside. Okay. Like you need to be in a building with the proper supplies to do that. But I have an alchemy kit. I know. You could do some things with that alchemy kit, but turning that like gold coating it is not something you could just be like, me, 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 me. Can I like, make some gold coins for myself? You could make some fake gold. Yeah, I'd like to do yeah. that. Make, yeah, a, make an al that. alchemy check. Could have done that and just gave it to the dude. Maybe. I was thinking about that. Wait, my alchemy, what what do I use for... Your wisdom? Okay. What am I doing on wisdom? Oh, I do. No, I have zero wisdom. Okay. Or intelligence. I'm going to use intelligence. Okay. So. Okay. Seven, nine. You, you take a few of your copper and try to make it gold, but they just kind of look like special copper. <laughs> so after a little while you guys bust into your road rations um you guys have like a little campfire going you're hanging out kind of jamming relaxing a little bit and it's getting later and you figure you're probably gonna have to to have a good sleep so who's doing which watches you need to have like two watches like somebody stays up and does the first watch while other second. people sleep and then somebody uh, i can up. do the first one okay Nice. I'll go third. No, uh, yeah, I'll, do, I'll go last. Okay. All right, All right Tony, roll a d20. <clears throat> That's where the god of Trixie's following us. God, shit. Okay. Four. Okay, nothing happens. Second watch. Two. Nothing happens. Third watch. One. Nothing happens. They wake you up. You've had a great long rest. You feel great. Sun hasn't quite come up yet, so you're like, all right, I'm getting up early. Go ahead and make your roll. Two. And it's it's a clear day. Everybody nice. gets a full long rest. Everybody's recuperated. Tony, you're you feel your magical inspirational energies as a bard have returned to you. Nice. And you guys clean up your camp and you hit the road. Start traveling again. All right, second day. You guys are in the back of the carriage. You're going through your disguise kits and you're trying to figure out other ways to kind of disguise her. Each one of you make another roll. Can I make a perception roll while I'm driving? 18. 18. What are the odds that you would both roll 18? That's crazy. crazy. Nice. Because of that amazing dual roll, you guys come up with like a new innovation. You're like, we're gonna put like one of those costume masks over her eyes so they don't see that she's like tiger eyed. And then we're gonna have like silk headdress and like Ooh. little beaded things and some bells and stuff okay, to make her Luigi, look like a, a gypsy us. princess. Please. Can I roll perception sick. while they're doing this? Yes. <laughs> you so you don't feel like you guys have passed by people on the road, you know, kind of crossing like farmers and other travelers and merchants and stuff. You feel like very safe on these roads because occasionally you also pass like these guards like who are just stationed at these little like huts every like five miles let's say and like you guys will go by and they'll like look at you strangely for a second like because you're a forest gnome but then they don't they don't pay you any attention okay so you guys continue you ride for the rest of the second day and as the sun is starting to fall you see on the horizon the walls of the great capital city and these, the tops of these buildings that are four or five stories tall, the size of buildings that you only see in a major, major city. And this is an old, ancient city with huge walls. And, and you see many, many people in small like settlements and little like trading shacks and like gypsy camps and stuff like all leading up to the city. And, and the sun is setting down in the west as you're approaching the city. And that's where we're going to end this first no. episode of the Bard Odyssey. We'll see you on the next one.
Do you enjoy the content on this channel? Then support Bill Allen on Patreon. Get access to exclusive patron content. You too can be a part of the Bill Allen World Patreon community. Join us today.